solving quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus c equals zero, where a is any real number and c is your constant. Now before we can answer um, or we, before we can solve the quadratic equation of this form, you should know what square root is. And uh, I believe you've seen square roots already in Algebra 1 and in Geometry. And we know that square roots is basically the opposite operation of any exponent of 2. So um, to give you a short review of square roots, if we know that if 2 squared is equal to 4, then the square root of 4 is equal to 2, which is true to the definition of square root, opposite operation of the exponent of 2. And uh, if we have 10 squared, which we know is equal to 100, then square root of 100 will be equal to 10. And if we have 5 squared equal to 25, square root of 25 is equal to 5. Now take note that this symbol right here is what we call as the radical symbol. So uh, sometimes we call it square roots, sometimes um, in the next few weeks we're going to see cube roots or fourth root, but in general form we call this radical. So let's have some examples of the equation of the form ax squared plus c equals zero, and let's find the value of x of those equations. So for the first example, we have x squared minus 9 equal to 0. So similar to um, um, solving equation or linear equation that we had a few weeks ago, to get rid of or to have x by itself, we need to get rid of negative 9 by adding 9 on both sides. So we'll have x squared, this cancels out, equal to 9. And we know that we're solving for x in this equation, and x squared still has an exponent of 2. So to get rid of the exponent of 2 in your x, we need to take the square root of both, um, both sides. So if we take the square root of x squared, it's simply x, and the square root of 9 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. Now notice that I put plus or minus the square root of 9 in my equation because the square root of 9, we are not certain if it's going to be positive or negative. That's why we're including the positive and negative symbol in our radical. So the square root of 9 could be 3, and negative square root of 9 would be x equals negative 3. So we have two possible values of 9. It could be 3, or it could be negative 3. So uh, that's why we have uh, plus or minus 3. On example number 2, we have 2x squared minus 8 equal to 0. Just like what we did on example number 1, we have to get rid of 8 to have x by itself. So add 8 on both sides, and we'll have 2x squared equal to 8. Now to get rid of 2, we need to divide both sides by 2 this time so that x squared will be by itself. And 2 divided by 2 is simply 1, and 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. Now for our new step, we know that every time we have um, an exponent of 2, to get rid of the exponent of 2, all we have to do is to perform it the opposite operation of an exponent of 2, which is the square root. And square root of x squared is simply x, and square root of 4 would be plus or minus square root of 4. If we further simplify it, we know that square root of 4 is a perfect square, so we'll have x equal to 2 and x equals negative 2. Now notice that every time we solve for a quadratic equation, we always have uh, two values of x's. And in these two examples, our, ex our x's is pretty much the same as the first one. The only difference is the other one is negative and the other one is positive. For example number 3, we have 25x squared minus 9 equal to 0. Our first step is to get rid of 9, so we add 9 on both sides. That's why we have 25x squared is equal to 9. And our goal is to have x by itself, so we divide both sides by 25, giving us x squared is equal to 9 over 25. And to get rid of the exponent, we take the square root of both, both sides, so we'll have x equals plus or minus the square root of 9 over 25. 
Now in this fraction, we know that 9 and 25 are perfect square. So we can take the square root of 9 over 25 separately. So we'll have x equal to the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 25 is 5. So the first value, value of x is x equals 3 over 5 and the second one will be x equals negative 3 over 5. For example number 4, I have 3x squared minus 2 equals 0. We still need to have x by itself so we add 2 on both sides. So we'll have 3x squared is equal to 2. To get rid of 3, we divide both sides by 3. So we'll have x squared is equal to 2 over 3. And since we have an exponent of 2, just like what we did on our previous sample, take the square root of both sides and we'll have x equals plus or minus square root of 2 over 3. Now this time, 2 and 3 are prime numbers. So we can't um, take the square root of those numbers. So all we can to is copy square root of 2 over 3 and have the other one as negative square root of 2 over 3. So sometimes we can simplify a fraction and sometimes we can no longer um, simplify the fraction using the square root. That's why on example number 2 our example are still in radical. Now sometimes when we solve a um, quadratic equation, sometimes we encounter answer as undefined. Now for the examples that we're going to have, we will encounter um, the x values which will be undefined. So let's start with this particular example. We have x squared plus 81 equals 0. So get rid of 81 by subtracting 81 on both sides and we'll have x squared is equal to negative 81. To get rid of the exponent, we take the square root of both sides and when we take the square root of x squared, we have x. However, if we take the square root of a negative number, and in this case negative 81, it's going to be undefined because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So I want you to take note of that. So always remember that every time you take the square root of a negative number, it's always going to be undefined. So therefore, for number one, our x is undefined. Now for number two, we have negative 3x squared minus 4 equals 0. So we're solving for x, so we add 4 on both sides to get rid of negative 4. And we'll have negative 3x squared is equal to 4. To have x by itself, we divide both sides by negative 3. So make sure that you are dividing both sides by negative 3 and not positive 3 because it's a common error. So we'll have x squared is equal to negative 4 over 3 and taking the square root of both number we will encounter that the negative fraction is inside the radical therefore x is also undefined. Now for this example um, our quadratic equation is written differently. Now we have ax plus c quantity square. So now we have a parenthesis plus another constant which is equal to zero. So we are still solving for x and to solve for x we'll go through the steps again like for example number one we have quantity x minus 5 squared minus 100. We take or add 100 on both sides to get rid of negative 100 and we'll end up with x minus 5 squared equals 100. Now, x minus 5 parentheses squared equals 100, we still need to get rid of the exponent before we can get rid of negative 5. So to get rid of the exponent, take the square root of both sides and we'll have x minus 5 equals plus or minus 10. So notice that the parentheses is now gone and the exponent is also gone because we take the square root of both sides. So now we have x minus 5 equals plus or minus 10. Add 5 on both sides and we'll have x equals 5 plus or minus 10. So we still have two possible answers here. So the first one will be x equals 5 plus 10 and the other one will be x equals 5 minus 10. Therefore, we have two values of x's, and this time they're not the same. 
Now we have x is equal to 15 and x equals negative 5. So sometimes it's not always going to be the same number um, with positive and negative sign. Sometimes we'll encounter answers with two different numbers. So let's answer number two. We have of the same form. So get rid of 1 by subtracting 1 on both sides, and we'll have x plus 2 quantity squared equals negative 1. Get rid of your exponent by taking the square root of both sides, and you will notice that we have a negative 1 inside the square root, and we know that every time we have a negative or a square root of a negative number, we'll always have an undefined answer. So even if this is 2, if we add 2 on both sides, it will still end up as undefined. So for this example, our answer is undefined. So for the third example, let's have x plus 2 parentheses squared minus 7 equals 0. So to solve for x, add 7 on both sides, and we'll have the quantity of x plus 2 squared equals 7. Getting rid of the exponent, we'll have x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Now notice that the square root of 7, um, we cannot further simplify this, so it's just going to be square root of 7. So to solve for x, we need to get rid of 2 on this side of the equation, so we added 2 on both sides, and we'll have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. And since we always have two answers for a quadratic equation, I split it into two, so you will see that we have two um, numbers right here. We have x equals negative 2 plus 7, and we have x equals negative 2 minus square root of 7. So these are the two values of x's that we have. Since we cannot add a real number in a radical, we'll just leave it as is. So this will be your answer. So it's a real number and a radical. And for example number 4, we have x minus 3 squared minus 3 equals 6. Solving for x, we add 3 on both sides, which gives us x minus 3 squared equals 9. We get rid of the exponent by taking the square root of both sides. So we'll have x minus 3 equals plus or minus 3, because we know that the square root of 9 is 3. So we add 3 on both sides so that x is by itself, and we'll have x equals 3 plus or minus 3. So I split them into two, so you will see we have two answers. One will be x equals 3 plus 3, and the other one will be x equals 3 minus 3. So the first value of x will be 6, and the second value of x will be 0.